Hey guys, today's topic is going to be data imputation, which is a very, very important machine learning concept. So make sure you watch this video till the end to know what it is and how you handle it. As always, if you want to read the slides, uh, the slide deck will be linked in the video description below, along with the social media links you can use to reach out to me. So what is data, uh, what, first off, what is data imputation? Why do we care about it? So in the real life, you will often come across contexts and situations where you have a lot of missing data. For example, pretty much every uh, every project I've worked on since Charles Hopkins has had a varying degree of missingness in the columns, etc. And sometimes these columns can be really important. Like for example, if we're talking about health, then factors such as smoking and cholesterol are very, very crucial factors to determining a lot of a person's health risks. And you can see that we might have missing values for these. So if we just feed it, if we just feed in like garbage data to our machine learning model, it's not going to be able to learn it. So data imputation basically looks at how different ways we can look to tackle our machine learning, uh, you know, mach uh, missing data from machine learning models. Uh, this is probably one of the most important and overlooked steps in a machine learning pipeline. So make sure you really, really understand this and make sure you watch this video till the end because it's very crucial. So let's get into it. The first bit is more like data amputation instead of imputation, haha. <laughs> Because in, uh, this is, quote unquote, the simplest thing to do, which is you just drop whichever da uh, data points are missing. You can do two things. So we can drop either the samples or the columns, uh, which are the features. So in this case, we could start, we could say that this row number two is missing uh, cholesterol. So we just don't, will not feed in row number two a machine learning model. Or we can say, okay, I see that cholesterol as a feature is missing. So I'm just going to remove this regardless of how many rows it's missing for, etc. So you might choose to do this when uh, different features are missing in different, so you might choose to drop rows when different features are missing in different cases. And you could choose to tr drop columns when you say, okay, this one column has too much missing data. So trying to use it will, you know, mess up my m model because I'll be adding a lot of bias and noise. So I don't want to do that. So these are some considerations you can take when you're amputating your data instead of imputing it. So, but dropping itself can add a lot of bias and you want to be very careful when you're doing it. So this is generally the uh, nuclear option and you want to be very, very careful when doing it. Remember, any uh, the more you mess around with your data, the more risk you run of uh, making your models impractical to the situations they were built for. Which And dropping is pretty much the mo most messing around you can do. And you always have to consider that what if the values you drop were very important outliers that can that would give you a much more uh, broad understanding of the context, in which case your machine learning model might not be able to handle those kinds of cases or might not be able to generalize as well. Which is why, again, d dropping is generally the worst case scenario. I almost never do it. I think I've done it like twice or thrice when, as I mentioned, my one of the features had like 70, 80% missing data. So I was just like, this is just not worth it. Or, you know, you might use it as a benchmark uh, to test with again other things, but be very, very careful when doing it. Then the second thing comes in and this is the mean imputation. And you can see an image for this example. It's a relatively straightforward thing. Whichever column is missing values, what we'll say is that uh, we'll just, whichever row cell is missing values, we'll just add the uh, mean of that cell uh, column to that cell. So in column two, we have the mean being five and uh, 17. So the mean should be 11, and that's what we're imputing. Look at uh, zero, column two of row one, right here. See, this is really cheap. It kind of makes sense in most cases uh, because a mean is generally a pretty good uh, explainer of central tendency. But one, this is very simplistic. Two, it's not going to preserve relationships and correlations between variables, see, because we're only considering this column. So if, say, column three could predict column two pretty well, or they had some relation, like column three is nine, somehow impacts column two is um, this and then column two's value th then you're not really considering that so that's a kind of uh, kind of a, an error you're adding into your data set so you want to always consider this and uh, the second thing is mean imputation does not work for categorical variables obviously because categorical variables don't have a mean and if you're working with very niche alg ideas like uh, ranking algorithms or any kind of those you definitely don't want to do this. So your results are obviously going to vary on what you choose, how you choose to implement them. 
but mean imputation with statistical data is generally a pretty safe thing to do if only as a benchmark remember that you don't have to do, do just one thing you, what you can do is you can run a whole bunch of different imputation tests and see which policy works best for you and if you're interested in knowing about this make sure you follow me on medium because i'll be writing an article about that very very soon and i think i'll go into the, later the, in this video for some detail the second is the mean or mode imputation which is basically we take a we take similar to the mean imputation but instead of replacing a missing value in the column by its uh, mean we're replacing it with either the mean or the mode this is also really uh, fast and cheap and in cases where uh, we have very extreme outliers that can skew the mean this kind of a method will work better so if, you know the very overused example is the case of net worth of lebron james class uh, net worth of lebron james class because James himself earns so much money that he's he will kind of skew the mean of your net worth to the right. But a much better understanding of the central tendency might be the median or the mode. So in that case, you might want to use those instead. And um, another big benefit is that they will handle categorical data just because of how they work. Especially mode imputation can be very very common with categorical data. And act you know if you're Hopefully, if you're liking this video and enjoying this, make sure you hit the like button before we proceed because the like button really helps my YouTube channel grow a lot. Getting back to the video, uh, you know, mean and mode imputation also fail to reserve, um, preserve relationships between features. So, which is why we t typically tend to do a lot of EDA before we even start imputing data to see what kind of correlations, cor uh, collinearity, etc. we can find to then maybe engineer some other features, etc. But again, well, we're going to proceed. Make sure you've hit the like button so far. If you have any feedback, comment section below. And the last kind, and this is gaining a lot of popularity over a bunch of different topics, is using machine learning to impute data. So there's a lot of different types. Uh, you can use random forests uh, with like uh, partial training. You can use uh, KNDRS neighbors and the derivatives of that. There's a lot of different types. You can use ga uh, GANs. Uh, generative adversarial networks all of these are really important concepts so make if you're interested in them like hit the subscribe button so that uh, you can hear of how to use all of these and learn about them and the benefit of machine learning is that it's going to ideally preserve the relationships because that's literally what it does it's able to consider the different variables and different data types and again machine learning works really well with very high dimensional complex it doesn't work very well but it's much better than humans at handling that kind of a relationship with very complex data. So uh, the, if you have that case, then maybe machine learning imputation might work the best. And here you can see one of the papers that were used. What they were trying to calculate was the relative variance of using different machine learning models. So obviously if you use mean imputation, your variance is going to be very less. If you use random imputation, it's going to be very high. Uh, so the right x-axis is the error. So if you have error and uh, the relative variance. You ideally want to have very little error and, and enough variance where uh, to account for real world data. So you can see like Miss Forest is getting somewhere close and different machine learning networks will handle this definitely. If you're interested in using multiple kinds of uh, imputation techniques on multiple kinds of data, there's actually an article that I'll link in the comment section below where I break down the paper that was handling this specifically for environmental data and you know, the paper was very clever with how they handle different techniques, etc. So make sure you give that a read if you're interested in this topic. So for closing, um, you know, there are multiple types of data imputation protocols. Each one has the pros and cons. You know, machine learning generally might give you very good performance, but it can be very fragile. It's also much more expensive than doing something like a mean or median imputation. You know, in, in, ca in very rare cases where you have lots of samples, you might even consider dropping things instead of imputing just because you say it's not worth it. So everything has a pros and cons. And generally in your pipelines, what will happen is you will test multiple kinds of imputation protocols to see what works best with your kind of data. This is a very recursive process. And uh, one of the best ways to kind of work in imputation and avoid the negative effects of it is just having lots of inf samples in the first place, which is why there is so much research being done to generative uh, uh, data sampling techniques, which take in one or a limited amount of sample data and they generate a whole bunch of other sample data with it. 
that is actually so important. And this image down here is a pretty good indication of how you generally want to use your uh, uh, build your uh, pipelines. So you know one of the easiest ways to test it is you start off with a complete data set, and then you start you create you randomly drop values in that data set to create missing data, and then you try to impute on this new incomplete missing data and try to compare that uh, the performance of your imputation protocols when compared to your complete data set. And this is going to give you a very clear idea. Again, uh, as I mentioned, I'll be writing an article on uh, Medium about how you do this in detail. So make sure you follow me there uh, to keep updated on this because this is a very important concept. But that's about it for this video. Thank you for watching. Uh, as always, links are in the description below. Use them to reach out to me. If you have any feedback for my videos, etc. Drop them in the comment section down there. And if you want uh, to help support this uh, videos, etc., uh, you can use my Venmo and PayPal links. Uh, using the links gives you a lot of access to free content and exclusive content that's available, like my annotated papers, my uh, special uh, notes, etc., that can really help you propel your machine learning career. And these are all the social media links. Always in the, they're always in the video description below. You can use them to reach out. Uh, if you're preparing for coding interviews, check out my Substack. It's helped a lot of people out. We've gotten a lo lot of good feedback, so I'm pretty comfortable recommending it at this point. And over as always, if you're in the USA and you can use my Robinhood referral link, you should do that. Uh, we both get a free stock. You don't have to put in any extra money, so there's no risk to you. And not using it, let's just losing free money. But thanks for watching. Have a good one. Bye.